Welcome everyone to the Success Elevated Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Hayden Lee, and I am joined this week by a very special returning, I, I don't even want to call him a guest anymore because he's basically been hosting this with me on several different occasions, but uh, returning guest host, we'll call it, uh, Derek Priest, uh, owner, operator, uh, high priest of marketing here at Spot On Solutions. <laughs> uh, Derek, thanks for uh, coming back on the show today. Thanks, Hayden. It's super great to be here. Um, I'm grateful for this opportunity. I love coming on to the podcast, talk about lots of cool stuff, talk to good good friends and and uh, colleagues of mine as well, too. So, and that's, I'm super excited about today's guest as well, too. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, this is, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's fun having you on the show because what ends up um, being a cool piece of that is a lot of people that you come on and interview are close friends of yours that you've known in the industry for a while. And then you get to like, it's like you're introducing me to a, an old friend of yours. And it's just makes the, makes the show really cool. Cause I get to meet some cool people and you get to talk about your, your relationship with them. So today that's uh that's very similar to, to what we're going to be doing today. Um, Derek, if you don't mind, kind of introduce our guests a little bit and then let's, uh, let's kick this thing off. Awesome. Ha I am happy to, and I am, Super excited about who um, we've invited and who has graciously accepted our invitation to be on our podcast today. Today we have the Mike Balzano <laughs> of uh, of BMP Media Group, right? R and R Magazine, The Driller. Like, there's so many different things that he's working on, but he is his official title within this organization is the group publisher. So he's the man in charge of, of a lot of different things. I have known Mike for a, a while now. We <laughs> swim in the same circles where we go to a lot of industry events. We rub shoulders with a lot of neat people and we've had the opportunity to get to know each other and become become friends over the years. So I uh, I wanted to yeah introduce Mike. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me, both of you. This is wonderful. It was a nice surprise when you reached out. I've been following you from afar, really. And we talked a lot, but it, 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 what Spot On's doing is just great. You're really, you're really killing it, and, and I'm happy to be a part of this. And by the way, Derek, you forgot, you forgot the most important part. We met at, at the Violin event last November, where Derek and I combined to win the golf tournament. That's oh, right. Oh, very oh, nice. Not, not that we're <laughs> bragging or anything, but not yes, that, we you know. did win the golf <laughs> tournament. Now, now, the, before we get sidetracked here, Derek, <laughs> I don't, Derek, listen, I, I'm I take this very, very nicely. I, I don't know you as, as a Tiger Woods, Derek. So is, is, is Mike the Tiger Woods in this situation and kind of, or what, what are we talking about here? Uh, uh, yeah. J John Rom. Um, John Rom. John Rom. Uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. So he is. Our, <laughs> I just I had to I had to make sure you know. I, I, Derek is just fine. We we ham and egged it, and it was. I, I I I can't believe you didn't mention it. But go ahead. Anyway. Okay. All right. <laughs> in, in our, we, we will say that the field was not very vast at the mm, time, okay. but we had a great time and. You know, well, and my, like Mike said, it wasn't the Violin event, and there are people at the Violin event. Um, I won't mention any names, but his initials are Jeff Jones, who <laughs> does everything he can to, you know, lessen my impact on the the people there. So he like totally, me and Mike, we won this tournament, and Jeff like totally brushed over it we didn't we did not in any way get our just due and i'm still harboring some ill feelings about that so. <laughs> that's funny well cool that's awesome Thanks for having me, guys. This is great. yeah of course i think there's there's so much here that we could we could really dive into and, and, and talk about but i think first thing initially and and we were talking a little bit before we started recording the first thing initially, I think it would be great for our audience that maybe isn't as familiar with you, Mike, but um, talk a little bit about your background and how, you know, you got into this whole BNP media thing. Like what, I don't know, you can start at, start at the beginning, start at the middle, whatever you want to do. But if you wouldn't mind, talk a little bit about your background and uh, kind of introduce yourself, for lack of a better term, uh, to our audience. 
It's an interesting, thank you. It's an interesting story about how I got to the, this industry, the r and experience industry. Um, I joined B2B Media in 1997, back at a company called Advanced Star Communications, where I met the then Darlene Mattoon, who eventually I, I somehow talked into marrying me. And she was a, a sales manager for r and for eight years. And so now, wow. fast forward to now, I, I, I feel like I have a nice unpaid uh, consultant living with me, could help me with the industry. But, um, I, it's, it's funny, I, I get a lot of mileage talking to clients now, we, in the late 90s and early 2000s, I remember clients coming up to me and saying, legitimately calling me, Mike, I have great news, we have a website. And that was like the mic drop moment, you know? And, 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 and it's, so you, you, you go through that and it really, where we're at now to then, it's, it's amazing how we, we keep uh, growing. I joined B2, B2, uh, BNP Media 10 years ago. I was with a uh, publication called Pollution Engineering and then SNPs and other things. and. You know, it's funny, I, I've been doing this now as you do the math for some time, and I realized like, maybe I, I need to, am I going to be ever get promoted to publisher? And then I, as a tale as old as time, I wanted to, as soon as I said, well, you know, I'm getting a long in the tooth for that. Maybe it's not going to happen. That happened, you know, lightning struck and somebody got promoted and I moved into that role. And that was about a year and a half ago. So I, I am learning this industry and learning what I can to help. And I, I tell people at r and I mean, we, our number one goal is to serve the industry. And if we do that properly, we'll be successful. So that's a, that's a Cliff Notes version of me. Um, Love it. I'm happy to be now. Thanks. No, I, there, there's so many pieces there. I think we can, we can take a little bit more time to go into, but the first thing that always strikes me, especially recently, as we've talked to some of our guests in the restoration world, specifically, we, you know, we work with a lot of different clients and a lot of different industries, but restoration obviously is who we talk to the most. Um, it, it, the, the, the cool thing to me about the restoration industry, and I, I would love your, your take on this is how close the industry feels, I guess, like vendors and, and, uh, and business owners and, um, like people like us that, that work kind of tangentially in the industry. Like, it just feels like there's a lot of, of really good people in this industry that care about how everybody's doing, right? Like not, they're, they're not so competitive that they don't want other people to succeed. And it just feels really close and, and, you know, maybe almost like a family at times. I don't know. Maybe, maybe talk a little bit about that. Mike, I don't know if you've felt similarly and if maybe you could, why is that? I, I, I doubt, I doubt there are other industries in the world that are as close as the cleaning and restoration world is, you know, here uh, in, in the U S. So maybe talk a little bit about that. Passionately, passionately care about the industry and, yeah, and yeah. they really are tight and you're exactly right i don't recall an industry that it was i've worked in several of them in, in media and did nothing like this and everybody knows each other everybody like as you say we compete but we want to we don't you know we're not against anybody succeeding yeah the same yeah. case with the vendor side uh, and us too but yeah i think that it's i, I recall when i took over we'd be getting what i could perceive to be really hostile angry phone calls and it happened so many times that I realized, wait a minute, they're not really mad. They just really want to see better things coming down the pipe. And yeah. when you and you realize that and you put your defenses down and you think, okay, I think they just most of the people we deal with are, are, are either managers or independent small business owners. And they have a lot more at stake. I mean, they're, they're risking everything on their business. Uh, we talked to in the last year, is we're gonna get into a little bit. I know we, we now are with the experience, we own the experience. And so I've talked to Mr. Cooper a lot about what it was like for him to start his companies and businesses. And, and that's the thing. You can see the pride with him and, and, and our other owners in that. It's just a, the fact that they have a lot to lose. They, wreck, they, they put everything at stake at this. And that's where you see the passion. Meanwhile, they know we have to, it's a, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? And yeah. that's this industry for sure. We, if we can keep everything clean and restore after disaster, we, we, we need each other's help to do it. Not one person can do it. I think that's the root of it. I love it. Yeah, I, I it's just an interesting thing that you know, I I've, I've worked here at Spot on Solutions for a little while now and it's it's something, you know, and we've been doing this podcast a, a little bit over a year, year mm -hmm. and 3 or 4 months. Um it's just something that it, especially recently that I've really started to notice that people really care about this industry and care about other people here and you know, I I always use the example I have a client um named Kenyon Martin that owns a restoration mm -hmm. company here in in my hometown 
and he uh he's been on the, the podcast several times he will go out of his way to like work with some of his competitors and like send business their way with almost no thought of they're ever going to send business back to him. Right. Like he, he, he just like genuinely cares about like being a good person and helping those around him and, and wanting mm-hmm. to build a relationship. He went, he took a, a, a the a general manager of one of the, his com- competitors to a trade show last fall. Like they, he just does stuff like that all the time. And um, it's just really, really fascinating to me, Derek, I, we haven't, we haven't, had you on the show in a little while. And um, I'd like to get your take on this as well, because this is something I'm sure that you've seen in the entire time that you've owned or you either owned Spot on Solutions or owned a restoration company, you know, something that I'm just kind of learning in the last few months. But if, if you wouldn't mind, talk a little bit about it, how you felt about like the, how close the industry is. And it seems like, you know, everybody in the industry. And I, and I know that you obviously have a lot of friends here, but it just feels like that's the industry in general that people just know everyone and have relationships and talk a little bit about that if you don't mind, Derek. Well, that's what I love about this industry is every, well, number one, we have our own set of challenges, right? Like, and owning a restoration company has, has unique challenges where largely we become, we become a middleman for a company who, or people who are, we're wanting to get paid from an insurance company but we work for a customer. We all have, we have, we have issues, we have challenges and we're all dealing with them in the same way. Right. And so, you know, I love the fact that we are a tight, you know, this industry is a tight knit group. Uh, everybody, you know, for the most part, I would say, you know, has an interest in helping someone else grow, right. And helping them overcome the challenges that they face as business owners. Um, and, and yeah, like, yeah, there is, there is still some, you know, in different places, you know, some fierce competition, but for the most part, I think people are you know, super willing um, to, to help, help another person and help, help the industry grow. And I think that from not just the companies, but the vendors and all the contributors um, in this industry, it is a really a small family type thing. Would you agree, mm-hmm. Mike? Absolutely. I'm yeah. learning a lot more about the industries through the through experience, through meeting some new clients I've never dealt with before. And they're really, they're the most passionate. So let's yeah. talk about that for just a minute, Mike. Like a lot of industry experience and knowledge and information that I've gotten over the years has come from, you know, going to these networking events, these industry uh, trade shows, call call them whatever you will, but you know, where people come together with like minds and try and to, to gather and, and glean more information and the experience um, Mm -hmm. has largely been, has been one of the leaders in this space for years. As a matter of fact, I think you correct me if I'm wrong, but the experience is the long, you know, the oldest cleaning and restoration industry event that is is around. Am I right? I believe so. And I talked to a customer the other day who, speaking of passion, firmly looked at me in the face and said, you, you are the largest show in this industry and you guys have to stop being wimpy about it and promote that. And I go, okay, well, let me make sure that before we get sued first. <laughs> but I think I, I it, it's it's been around for a long time. There, I'm work, after working with uh, Larry and Jennifer and Jillian for the past year on our whole team, they, they're a well oiled machine in how they do this. They have a, a set way to do it. It's proven to be successful, and we're just trying to provide some uh, muscle in a big media company to back up and not kind of mess it up for the time being, and to add what we can to help as of right now. Well, and that um, and that's interesting. I, I I I'm super interested in knowing the backstory to this, right? Because I mean, I've attended the experience for years. I mean, I remember when it was not not so many years ago, it was named something else. I, I the name of what it was before, uh, Connections, right? Is that what it was yes. called? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, I mean, I've been attending that for a long, long time, but I'm interested to hear the story about why and how a media group, for that matter, felt like um, getting into this trade show space or event space um, 
was a, a good idea and and what BNP Media's vision is for for the future. I mean, because I know Larry, I know Larry really well, and I know that he has poured his soul into building the experience, right? Um, and has done a great job. So what tell me tell us a little bit about that because I'm and I I know I'm super interested and I'm sure there's lots of people that want to understand why and how this all came about. This hasn't been told to me from uh, I'm not the CEO of the company, you know, I, I, but but I it's been we've heard it enough. So I think the way this this company's going and probably the industry as a whole down the road is going to be a, a digital base with an event as your anchor. And this happened to this opportunity happened to come. I wasn't involved in it from the start, but this opportunity happened to come to BNP Media at the time when they were starting to really think that. And they looked right. at this and they, they said, gosh, maybe this somehow getting this event might be just perfect for RNR to be the marriage. Look, it's going to be, we, but we bumped heads for a while. It's it, when you merge, it's always a little rocky, but we're going to get to the point where this is going to be a really nice little package for the industry. Um, we, we talked to Larry, we had, we had heard through the grapevine that might, this show might be available. We weren't sure if that or not, but you know, right when I took over as publisher, we started talking to him and, and uh, it went on for most of last year that maybe this is, and our, 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 our executives felt this was probably the one we want to target if, if it was available. And if not, that's okay. But if it was great. Um, even to the point of last year's experience, I knew, and we all know Larry and he's great, but I mean, he's doing, we were doing the Apple a day giveaway and he kept, no one, we had to keep quiet because nothing's official yet. And he kept saying, well, let's get my friend Mike from r over here. How about Mike from r and I'm like, stop. <laughs> don't, don't, don't stop with it. It's a secret still. Don't so, put me on the um, spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, it finally was announced after that. And I, I think it's just... It's a great, there are two great events that tie in with what we're trying to do. And that does, again, serve the industry. Now we can serve the industry through our, our product, our, our, our website, our newsletters. We can serve the product through this event and eventually it'll become, it's already becoming one big conglomerate in a way. Awesome. I mean, I know, like, I don't know of any other event in our industry that does, does an event twice a year. I mean, they're trying, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, the strategy that Larry has had is to try to, you know, make it convenient for people across the country to att attend a really great show and get some great information. So he's always had one out on the kind of towards the East Coast. And then, mm -hmm. you know, he's always had the flagship or I, I don't know if you call it the flagship, but in, in Vegas every year as well, too. So, I mean, I love that. I don't know if that's your plan to continue that or not, but well, it, that's fair to call it the flagship. It kind of is, as we've discussed. It's it's a it's a consistent great event that the industry really loves, and we don't want to muck it up too much. You know, we want to keep it going. I think that in the future, I, we're we're locked in for Chattanooga next year, and Chattanooga is going to be in April for the spring event. And the the key to that is Shaw Shaw Carpet and Shaw Flooring are, are partnering with us. That we're going to have uh, tours to to go to see their facility, which is just five miles off of where we're going to have it. That was the key to that. Oh, and after sure. that, and, we'll, and I, I expect this to continue twice a year. Um, but right now we're focused on Las Vegas and of course Chattanooga, which will be here before we know. Awesome. Fantastic. I love that. Hayden, I, you know I can talk for hours. So. <laughs> You're good. No, I, I love the conversation around, yeah, I, stuff like trade shows, again, fascinate me to someone that's not as uh, – not as experienced in the industry as you both are, right? That I'm still kind of learning a little bit about this industry, but um, trade shows are an awesome thing. And uh, people get a lot of really, really awesome value from them. And, and that was kind of going to be, and, and I was, I was kind of trying to think how I could kind of flow this into the next piece of this, but when it comes to trade shows and networking with other business owners, um, because there's 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 a bunch of different things you can learn. You know, at every trade show is like, oh, get some training for your techs or listen to these speakers and stuff. But I would say a lot of the trade shows, uh, the 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 takeaway that business owners get is just, hey, they were able to network and learn from people around them, from their peers, right? And learn how, hey, these guys are. This is how they're doing their, you know, water mitigation or whatever, right? Like, they, they, it's it's a great opportunity to go to the dinners and learn and network like Derek I know you've talked even as a vendor 
that some of the best value you get from um, trade shows is are the dinners, right? That you and Katie go to at, at the end of the day, you, you've spoke and talked to a bunch of people all throughout the day and you've listened to all the speakers and done some really awesome training. But then, you know, those dinners at the end of the day are almost just as valuable as everything else. Um, and so I don't know if, if both of you want to maybe kind of speak to like the networking piece of this. Why is it important for a restorer to network, whether it's in a trade show or not? But why why should a restorer care about these networking opportunities? Well, I mean, this is the that's the one one. The, the, the events are the only times a year everybody gets together. And yeah. like you said, like-minded people, it doesn't matter if you're competitors or not. You can really bounce ideas off each other and, and really grow and meet people who can help your business instantly. And you, we, yeah, we could do that social and that's that's very important as well in other ways. But I I, I used to have a lot of old, person, old salesperson sayings. I apologize up front, but I used to tell people there's no, nothing ever happened poorly when I went on a client visit. You know, I might go see Hayden Lee Incorporated. We may not do business, but you know, our, our, our relationship is better off and eventually we will, you know? Yeah. And it, there's something still about it shaking hands and, and meeting people that just is invaluable. And that's what the trade shows provide. Our show, this show, it was hammered into me as soon as we recorded it. it was the hands-on demonstrations are what brings people to our event. We have, we have the show floor. We have the, the regular sessions and whatnot, but the whole day and plus are devoted to complete hands-on demonstrations of a cleaning, a carpet cleaning, a restoration, of course. We have the flood house we do every year where they, we flood, they build a house, they flood it and they dry and restore it. And, I think those are things that are, that are unique to this to, to this industry that that they do and that and it ties in with what you're talking about as far as just right um meeting people you know and, and networking and that ties them in as well Derek? i love it i i think that's exactly true. like i for example i mean i was like i said i've attended the experience a uh, very few experiences of experiences have i missed i mean you know often yeah. you know even when i even when i owned my restoration company I mean, at least, and at least I get to Vegas every year, right? But I, you know, like I was just in uh, at the last experience, and I spent a lot of time just walking around. I mean, sat and watched uh, the uh, the coys and these uh, koi teach a teach an hour long this uh, class on not not the book learning of how to clean up after a fire and smoke but actually like there was you know the process what you do what to use how to you know you have the you know two bucket method right and don't ever put your dirty ra dirty rags into your rinse water like and they did the whole thing and so like from a perspective of somebody who's either wanting to hone their skills or wanting to get into that there's only so much you can learn from a book right um but when someone is actually showing you how to how to do it like it it's amazing i mean lisa lavender uh mm -hmm. conned me and katie one year we're <laughs> to they were having a um it was at it was at the experience they were having a containment building contest, right? I, and now, granted, I won't say that I didn't have any experience building containment. I built containment many times in the past. It had been a number of years, but uh, but me and Katie, we went and helped. Or we we participated in this uh, competition, and I love the fact that even though at the time you know I wasn't I wasn't in the industry like i love the fact that we were in the trenches and we were learning how to do this so that when we're on a people are on a job they've got the experience they don't look like you know chuck in a truck you yep. know who doesn't know what what he or she is doing and so i love the hands-on side of things um because it does it, you get actual practical knowledge so um Again, and Mike, we could talk about that all day. And I'm glad, I'm super excited about, you know, that you guys see this as an opportunity to help elevate the industry, right? Um, 
And, and that is, I mean, because that's what, again, that's, that's what we're all about, helping people, helping people succeed. Oh, thank uh, you. Good. No, you go ahead. So Hayden, what, what other questions you got? Because I can rapid fire some other ones. Too, so. <laughs> well, the, the big thing that I think would be good to kind of close out with and then kind of lead us into some future conversations with Mike, because I like like we've mentioned multiple times today, I think there's so many different ways we could go down this in the future. Um, the, the big question that I want to pose to you, Mike, and it's it's a, it's an all encompassing question. And so feel like you can take it whatever direction you want, whether it's with the experience or with BMP Media, R and R Magazine, whatever you want to do. But um, the the simple question is what is what does the future look like? What are your goals for you're now the, the group publisher? What are what are your goals for the future? And feel free to take this however if you yeah, if you want to talk more specifically about the experience or if you want to talk about BNP Media or R and R magazine, but what what does the future hold? What what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish in the next year, two years, three years? What what does the future look like for you guys? That's that's a great question. That's a loaded question. I gotta take a second. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a big, it's a big picture one, but yeah, what whatever, whatever kind of direction you want to go down. No, it's 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 everybody knows that in uh, about four years ago, BNP Media decided to uh, stop print publications. We have some print things at the show. But we've gone to an entire digital format for everybody, and it was kind of painful for all of us salespeople because we had to relearn everything. And and now that we're over the hump, I, I'm kind of I'm glad they did that because it's forced us to, to take the next step to the future of what really is going on. Uh, we all love magazines. I like holding them too, but I mean, most people are are, are, are digesting content. Like this, like this podcast we're on right now, and what you're right. doing, your newsletters and things like that, and this that allowed us to get a head start. So, um, as far as R and R goes, you know, we hired a new editor in chief about four months ago named Mildred Ingram. And she's doing a great job. We brought Mildred Ingram on. She was she was a her background was from, from TV. She was a TV announcer and TV reporter and whatnot. And completely, we actually had to show her a little more about the writing thing, the exact opposite of where it was. But that's where they, that's where this is going. We need people who are going to be stars and go out there and really convey the message and have more of a podcast, video, e-newsletter setup. And that's where we're trying to, and I want to watch how I say this because um, we're giving away the ladder award this year at the event for, uh, we've done that the last three or four years. And it's the people, I, we have a winner already. I'm not going to tell you, we can't reveal that yet, but people under 35, who is the, the, the next generation of our industry. Oh, good. I only have one year left. You can do it. <laughs> get it in, Derek. You're gonna get, somebody's going to nominate you. <laughs> I get it. That's um, at our, our event, at our event coming up, Les Cunningham, Jeff Jones, Ed Cross, Michael Pinto, Howard Partridge. We all know those names. They're all legends in our industry. They're all going to be speaking again, and we have the utmost respect for them. But we've got to start cultivating the next generations. Um, another group I have called the Driller, uh, another another brand. We started kind of a sister thing of this called Emerging Drillers, about for young to, to honor young people who are going to be the next. And our, our, one of our competitive publishers sent us a, a instantly nasty email. Isn't this age discrimination? Like, no, no, we're, 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 we're embracing who we are, but we got to cultivate the future. And yeah. that's what we're trying to do both with this event, both, both of our events and with r and r too. Um, and I'll have you know, you'll appreciate this. All the people that, all the people that are watching this are in the industry. I, I made Mildred pass this test before I hired her. I said, you know, let me know the difference between Jeff Jones, Jeff Jones, Jeff Cross, and Ed Cross. And if you could answer that question, you're in. And she did. She did really well. <laughs> that took a long time. <laughs> I know that's that. a great. That's a great trivia question. That is a good question. So um, that's I, I. I just I just want to embrace the, the new technologies, the new future, and never lose track. Tony Robbins. He may not have said this, but I heard him say, you know, all of us humans and fish and all organisms, we're either growing or dying. No one's staying the same. And we got to keep learning every day to get better. And that's what I'm trying to train my team to be focused on. What's the next exciting thing for this industry? And that's what that's how I see it. I love it. And that's okay. just that's 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 a great mindset just to have in general, Mike, for any business owner in any industry, right? Like um Derek, what was the um I butcher the quote every time I try to say it, but we, we talked about this in our most recent quarterly planning where is it is 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 the phrase and gosh I'm going to say it wrong but what got us where we are today is not going to get us where we want to go is it some some along those lines Derek? Yeah, I mean that's that's the whole 
the whole concept, right? I right. remember I was in a, um, and, and I don't, I don't believe that this was the origination of that quote either, but I was at a um, meeting at, at I, an icon event, which was the, um, it, they called it icon. It was the infusion soft at the time. And now it's keep um, their user conference, annual user conference. And their CEO, Clayton mask was up talking about their, um, what had been their Everest mission where they were, you know, they had some big goals they were trying to accomplish and, and they were, it was like climbing Mount Everest and then they had hit it. And mm -hmm. I want, I want to say like their, the goal was like a hundred million dollars and so many, so many small businesses that they were helping. Anyway, once they hit that goal, then they like, they had, you know, they had to reset and uh he had to but it, they went along struggling doing having a hard time exp, you know growing from there and he you know had a meeting with his you know top people and that's where he's like what got us to here and at the time it was like what most people would think was huge right it was they were already a big company and what in what most people's idea of big is but He's like, what got us here will not get us there. The team, the people, the, the procedure, everything we're doing while it was amazing to get us where we're at is not going to get us where we need to, where, you know, on the next step. So we've got to always be growing, right? And we got to always be looking at opportunities to, to get better. Well, and to... We and to Mike's point, cultivate the next generation, right? Yeah, like that's, I'm, that's, yeah. that's a big piece of this. So Mike, sorry, I cut you off there. What were you going to say? No, you're fine. I got, we, we, it's, we could keep doing this. We keep doing the way we're doing it. It's for all the companies and we could probably be fat and happy and everything, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. You know, yeah. you, I don't want to risk that. I want to keep you looking for, for the future and moving on. Oh, that's awesome. Well, <laughs> Mike, thanks for coming on the show today. This is a great podcast. It was great to get to know you and, and learn a little bit about what you guys are doing with both the experience and and uh, R and R magazine and, and everything. And so we're excited so then, to to have you on in the future. Sorry, Derek, go ahead. Really quick though, I think it's important, Mike. You know, this is it was not a not a sales pitch by any means, but I think it is important for people to know what they can do. You know, how they can how they can attend when the event yeah. is um where Thank it's you. at what the venue looks like why they should go um yeah. so you i think you should take just a minute or two and just say okay this is tell us about when and, and how we can uh take advantage of the experience coming thanks up. man i was gonna say they're gonna, they're gonna kill me if i don't say this next thing so thank do you. it <laughs> do it this is your chance no pun <laughs> so september 6th through the 8th is the experience it's going to be back at the um caesar's forum where we we're at last year which is not caesar's palace it's on the street a little bit, about a 15 minute walk from Caesars Palace, but it's a nice, it's only about a two year old uh, facility, which is great. So six of the eight are the three main days. On the fifth, we're gonna have those workshops again. Uh, Shaw Flooring, Howard Partridge, uh, Restoration Crosscheck, Mr. Uh, Ed Cross's company in Firehouse and the Coys, as you mentioned before, are gonna do big workshops that day as well. You can register at rnrmagonline.com. This is a long one, let me start over. rnrmagonline.com backslash the dash experience dash convention. And when you get to that website, uh, you have all the information you need. Our attendance is looking good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in always communication with our event manager, Andre Hansen, and we look at where they were last year, week to week to week going up, and we're right about where we were last year, which is good news. So we can, we can grow this and get it going. And I'll be there and we'll have a good time. We're gonna have all the, the normal fun, the big party that first night that everybody's used to. We're gonna do that with bands and craziness and uh, good food. The, the trade show will be open when the, the uh, tracks are not open and vice versa. So they're going to focus on the important things. You can go network, as we talked about before. And again, September 6th through the 8th. I'll be there. Come see us at our booth. Um, we'll have Chachkis for you. And then you can learn something, too. We love <laughs> awesome. I love it. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. All Thanks, right. This is great. I really appreciate Hayden, it. Hayden, I think it, I know this is uh, we tend, I know I I forgot to talk to Mike about this, but I, I'm super interested in asking him 
the three questions. Okay, let's do it. I, I think that's it. a great way I to close it up. Kind of, I don't even know what they are, so let's go. We'll, we'll, give, him, we'll give him no pre pre uh, um, thought to this, So, I, but I am anxious to hear um, Mike's wisdom on this. So let's do it. Him, okay. Go with the three questions. Give him some background on it. Okay. Well, Mike, when we close every episode, we ask every new guest that comes on, we ask them three we call them rapid fire questions. Don't feel the pressure to make them rapid fire questions, but three quick questions at the end of every episode. The first question we always ask is uh, favorite book or podcast that you're reading or listening to now, or that you've listened to or read recently, just favorite, favorite book or podcast right now. Well, everybody's favorite podcast is uh, smartless for fun and enjoyment and, and silliness, but I, my favorite book, and I can't say it, is, is Mark Madsen's famous "The Subtle Art of Not Giving Up." Yes, yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. And you know what? Everything, people laugh at that. I go, no, it's actually a really good book. And it's really awesome. It made me think of things a lot differently when I read that. Like, yeah, you know what? Let go, let go of the wheel, and 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 go with what, what's important. So that would be my answer to that. Love it. That's a great first answer. Second question. Right. Um. We know you have some busy, long days running r r Magazine and prepping for the experience. And I'm sure after the experience, you're going to need some of this. But how do you relax and recharge at the end of a long day? What do you, what do, you do to, to recharge your mental, emotional batteries? My wife and I, um, we didn't have kids. We, were not, we didn't have kids. We were a little older when we got married. And, and, and at some point, we realized that being from Cleveland, Ohio, we don't really have to be here in the wintertime. We could not we go somewhere. <laughs> And you know, we, we decided to move down here to South Florida, Naples, Florida. And we, and I'll say, I, I got a lot of miles out of this. Nine years ago, we came down here. We tell people, well, we're, we're young snowbirds, you know, and now we're snowbirds. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But um, what we do, with that in mind, I mean, I've always played a lot of golf, as Derek knows, but we, you know, there's so many fun things to do on here. I like to go to the pools in, in the Gulf of Mexico and just, you know, I hate to say meditate, but kind of is that way. Let's just sit by the ocean and just calm down. And that, that just, I, I, I love that more than just about anything right now, since we're down here. Oh, it's awesome. I, 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 just about everybody that comes on the show talks about some kind of, of thing that just allows them to shut the brain off, right? And I, there's so many different ways to do that. For me, in a lot of ways, it's like doing something like golfing um, is a great way to do that because it requires all of your focus. And so hey. it's a great way to just, the stress of work and life, you can really just kind of shut the brain off and, and, and relax a little bit. It's awesome. So I love it. Um, last question. This okay. one's a little bigger. So feel free to, to, if you, if you need some time to think about it, but it, off the cuff is great too. Um, la- what, what we always try and ask people is if you could rewind to the beginning of your career. So beginning of your career with R and R or BNP, whatever you want to do and tell younger Mike, one thing, what would that one thing be? My biggest problem, and I'm mature enough to admit this, is I was very cocky when I was younger. And I, I, I thought, you know, don't think, did you, don't you know who I am? And this was, no, nobody knows who you are, you idiot. You just, you got to do something first. You know, I, 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 I job hopped a little bit too much. I think what I would tell younger me is just stick it out. You get what you know is right and just stick it all the way. Don't, don't bail at the first instance of problems. I think people do that a little too much. I think as we get older, we realize that now you're going you're to be a little more mature about this and hang in there. That's what I would do. That, that's my personally. Um, I would have worked with a much, several less companies that I'd taken that advice. I know that, but I, um, but you know what? As you said before about becoming a publisher, as soon as I thought of it, yeah, it's not going to happen. That's cool. You know, my, my life isn't over. It, it happens. Things happen. And maybe we had to go, maybe people, you have to go through things to get to where you're supposed to be eventually. Yeah, you know, that's how I feel about this right now. Love it. That's super interesting that you said that because like, and how, how time and experience change us because like, if uh, like the word cocky, if I was to, if someone said, Hey, tell me, tell me a little bit about Mike, like that word would never, I, that's not one that would have come up. Like, so th- I mean, cause I, I number one, I, I think Mike is one of the most genuine kind friendly people like and there has never been like any kind of thought that he's better or bigger or, or you know than anybody else right i i love that Thanks, about mike but yeah so that so hey your experience has 
that has helped you in that in that run. It's been awesome. I like I said, cocky is not a word I would use to describe Mike. Not confident, not arrogant, just cocky. And sometimes, sadly, people you get kicked in the dupa a little bit to straighten them out. And that was one of those cases. But <laughs> hopefully, uh, this new generation we're trying to champion won't won't have that problem, and they'll they'll just join and be, be doing these speeches later for us now. So That's thanks, awesome. Dave. I really appreciate that, Derek. That's very nice. No, uh, it's uh, no, it's seriously from my heart. I I, I just. I'm super grateful for the relationship that we've been we've been uh, growing over the last couple mm -hmm. of years. Anyway, it's been it's been awesome. I, I super. And we'll continue to grow it. We come up with that. many opportunities as we can get, and we're going to make sure this continues. So, and thanks for having me. This is wonderful. It was a lot of good time. Oh, this was great. Thank thank you, Mike. Thank you, Derek, for for you know introducing us and and getting Mike on the podcast. This has been really really awesome, and um, we hope to have you on in the future. There's Obviously, so many more things we can talk about. And so we need to coordinate with you so that we can talk more about some of this stuff in, in the future. But again, thanks for coming on. Uh, Derek, thanks for joining us as well today. And uh, we'll, we'll chat with you both later. Awesome. I, thank, thank you very much. I absolutely will be back and you, you get a deal. And we'll Love see you on September 6th in Las Vegas too. Don't there you go. That. This has been Success Elevated, making you a little bit better one show at a time. Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe on YouTube or any other major podcast platform to listen to more episodes. We are proudly brought to you by Spot On Solutions. If you'd like to learn more about how we can help you grow your business, please check us out at spotonsolutions.com.